Hello, hello. Hey, Danielle. Can you hear me? Hey. Go ahead and share this with a friend. About to get started. How was your day today, Danielle? Did you make it to church? Okay. <laughs> it was good. Today was good. It's um, it's been a full week as you guys know but the day was great um, my husband and I went to um, a paint with a twist last night and it was a lot of fun but we stayed out a little late so I spent the rest, rest of the day just chilling and watching TV thank you Aisha hello Cece is it C. Michelle? I am just waiting on Miss Tawana so we can get started. I don't know how to add her any other way. Let's see. Oh. Well, guys, good evening. Good evening. Thank you guys for showing up for another Girl Show Up Sunday. I am waiting on Ms. Tawana to join us, but I am so excited for our discussion. And Danielle, this is your friend that you um, connected me to. So this is going to actually be my very first time talking to her. Hey, Aisha, how's your day going? How's work? How are all your students doing in class? I saw one of your students just got another job offer. So I can't wait to bring you on, hopefully next month, and we can talk about that. It's okay. I'm grateful. <laughs> How are y'all showing up this week? How are y'all showing up this week? It's Girls Show Up Sunday. How are y'all showing up this week? Hey, Crystal. <laughs> it's Girl Show Up Sunday. How are you showing up this week? I want to know, how did y'all show up last week? <laughs> Maybe that's a better question. I wish I could hear you. I hate it doing the lives because they're so one-sided I can never hear what y'all are saying or what y'all are thinking and it's all so awkward and you just gotta like stare at the screen <laughs> screen and wait on y'all to respond okay Danielle says last week I showed up surviving dang I wish I could bring you on so you can expound on that <laughs> wait not everybody's surviving last week why? Why surviving? Why just surviving? <laughs> I showed up surviving. How are you showing up this week, Danielle and Crystal?
we're going for thriving this week. I know that's right. <laughs> Wait, y'all got a birthday coming up. We got birthdays coming up, so I'm going to need y'all to come out of their surviving season and cross over into your thriving. Crystal, how are you showing up this week? Danielle says she's going for thriving. Okay. I think it was Sarah Jakes that said, she said something about surviving and thriving, something like who you, who you needed to be to survive may not be the same person that you have to be to thrive. I think I got that right. I'm pretty sure that's what she said. And that really spoke to me. The person you had to be to survive will not be the same person that you will be to thrive. So I just give y'all that for free. Hey, Catrice. Hello, hello. Happy Sunday. Okay, Crystal says she's going to show up purposeful this week. Catrice, how are you showing up this week? Thank you. Hey, Carla. So listen, tonight, first of all, thank you guys so much for jumping on. It's another Girl Show Up Sunday. I love doing these. Um, actually, it's Sunday Night Live. And our series this month is Girl Show Up. So I've just been highlighting different women who are showing up um, in different ways for the year. And so I think um, Danielle said that she's showing up. She's going to go for thriving this week. Crystal says she's showing up purposeful. Uh, Catrice says she's, show she, ugh, she's showing up bold. So, Carla, how are you showing up this week? I love that, showing up bold. Hey, So Prosperous. How are you showing up this week? So I'm going to tell you guys, I am showing up this week confident. This week is my first, um, for those of you who don't know, I got my promotion that I have been going for all of last month. They finally announced it. Um, they finally, when did they announce it? When did I tell y'all? Um, I think it was Thursday. So yeah, Crystal, what did I tell y'all? It was Okay, intentional and courageous. I love that. Intentional and courageous. Focus. Okay, I love this. How are you guys showing up? So I'm showing up confident. I am showing up confident. I got my promotion. They officially announced it last Thursday. And um, on Friday, I actually spoke to one of the guys that... Um, I'm going to be leading. And he said, he was like, you know, I was, I was kind of blindsided by your background because I hadn't even been with the company a full year yet. And um, a lot of people were surprised that I got the promotion. And he was like, um, when our director sent out the announcement, he basically uh, put my background in the email, uh, one of the guys that I'm going to be leading, he was like, you know, I was really, really um, blindsided by your background. Like, I know that you've been doing good in your role, but I had no idea um, that you had such an extensive background. He was like, I was actually really impressed by that. And when I, when he said that, it just made me go like, hmm. <laughs> um, it made me immediately think about the story of David, you know, when David showed up for battle, 
and Saul and everyone kind of questioned, hey, Sawana. Hi. <laughs> I'm Hello. telling them this quick story real quick, and then I'm going to introduce you real quick. But um, it made me think about when David went to battle and how Saul, when he, David was getting ready to go up against Goliath, and David was like, I can take him. And everybody was like, uh, who are you? And are you sure you can do this? And I was like, that's basically how I felt when I went for this role. Um, a lot of people didn't know, know who I was. I've kind of been chilling in the background. And sometimes people think that confidence is loud and being qualified is loud, but it's not. You can be confident. You can be value, valuable. You can be qualified and you don't have to be loud about it. And when I think about the story of David, David wasn't loud about it. He was in the field. He was minding his own business, but he was still qualified for the fight against Goliath. So when it came time for David to fight, y'all know I love this story. David read, read off his resume. He was like, listen, I've been qualified for this. And on my job, one of my interviews, one of the managers asked me, he was like, um, what, what makes you ready for this role? And I said to him, it was never a question of, if I was ready, I was always ready. It was always just a matter of time. It was never about me being ready. It was never about me being qualified. I've been qualified, been ready. It was just a matter of time. And so for me, this week, I'm going to continue to show up in that, show up in that confidence and knowing that I was always qualified for this role. And now God is just aligning the timing for it and allowing me to walk in it fully. So that is my girl show up moment. I'm really excited about this position, but I just wanted to encourage some of you in that, like, don't, I always say this, do not forget your resume. Be ready to read off your resume because you never know when you're going to have to go for a job uh, that you've always been qualified for, but you may second guess yourself because you don't have your resume ready, because you haven't been reading off your resume, you haven't been studying your resume. So don't let anyone disqualify you. Remember your secret battles. Remember your hidden ba battles. Uh, remember the stuff that you were doing quietly, because again, I don't think that confidence has to be loud. And you've been ready. So anywho, that's my one too. I was buying us some time for Miss Tawana. <laughs> nice <laughs> Thank you so much. Join us tomorrow. I know, guys. I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry. So Where it's so were good to you? be here. What were you doing? You I know what? Know. You know what? The devil is a liar. Um, I literally got locked out of my house. Um, but I am right, exactly. Um, so I am here now and praise the Lord. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited for what the Lord um, has in store for us. So thank you for having me. It's a joy to be here with you guys. I am happy to have you. So Tawana, um, for those of you who are just now joining, joining us, thank you again. My name is Ebony King. I'm the founder of Tabitha's Tea Party, where our mission is to empower women to rise from dead places. Our series this year um, is Girls Show Up. And so we are kicking it off this month by highlighting women who are showing up in different areas of their life. And today I have Miss Tawana Darche. Am I saying it right? Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> she is going to talk to us about how she's showing up obedient. You had a, a long paragraph, but <laughs> stuck out the most for me is that you said that you were showing up, showing up obedient and humble. Um, so I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Yes. And tell us a little bit more about yourself and what it means for you to show up obedient. So y'all, y'all give her some hearts and welcome her. <laughs> See some of my people on there. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, so, um, again, for me, um, my name is Tawana, Tawana Burks, go by Tawana Darche is my middle name. Um, I recently published a book, uh, last year and the Lord has just been doing some really great things, um, with that. And so showing up obedient for me, um, it looks like what is the Lord saying and what is the Lord doing in this specific time that we're in? Um, I believe that everything has shifted. Everything has changed. 
we are in a new time, um, according to even Isaiah 43 that says, you know, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? And the Lord is doing a new thing. Um, and so for me, it's really just like being in tune to what is this season? What is the Lord doing in this time? How is this time new? And what is the Lord requiring mm -hmm. of me in this particular uh, in this particular season? So it's taking it one thing at a time, not leaning on my own understanding not doing the things that I'm comfortable with doing, but finding out what is the destiny move of God for me in this season. Um, and so that is, you know, just big picture of what it looks like step by step. Laura, what are you saying? What are you doing? And how can I be obedient to the, the specific time and the season that we're in? I love that. So you said a couple of things. First of all, hey guys, thank you for joining. Hey, Lucky. Hey, sister. I love you. I miss you. Hello. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about the obedience piece. And I looked up the definition of obedience, biblical, the biblical. Y'all, I haven't had enough coffee tonight. <laughs> I'm just going to let Lord, Lord. Uh, I need to do some speech exercises before I jump off. So the biblical definition of obedience is to hear God's word and act on it mm -hmm. and I, I was listening to a podcast earlier today um, by Joyce Meyer and she talked about being uh, making courageous decisions and not carrying that spirit of fear but being bold and acting on whatever that word is that God has given to you in this particular season absolutely so could you tell me a little bit about what that looks like for you uh when you talk about that word season and being obedient to God's word, because it looks differently for different people. Absolutely. And, and so what does that look like for you right now? So right now for me, um, so uh, I was in the DMV area, DC for 12 years. And just last year, I received the call from the Lord to come back home to Michigan. I'm from Detroit. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, that was like, a, I never thought that I would ever move back home to Detroit. Uh, never had any plans to, uh, but the Lord said to pack up and to go um, mm -hmm. and gave me a specific timeline that for me was like a big deal. And um, obedient looked like packing up, quitting my job and moving back home and seeing like, what is the Lord? I'm a visionary. So I'm used to receiving this big picture, understanding like five steps ahead. Where am I going and how am I going to get there? But the Lord didn't give me that big picture. He said, I need you to move. He told me that he was in, I was moving into a time of rest. He was sending me back home to serve my family. Um, and that was it, you know? And so in this particular season right now, for me, that just looked like, hey, not trying to make a plan B, not trying to figure out exactly what, how to make God's word come to pass, mm -hmm. but sitting still in the right now and and, and decreeing and declaring to my soul, to myself, um, to situations and circumstances that I'm not going to move until the Lord sends me and I'm not going to put my hands to anything that the Lord has not called me to put my hands to. Um, and so that's how it specifically looks for me right now. Oh, I love that. So did you hate your job? No, I actually was just up for a promotion. I got a, I, they offered me a promotion right before I uh, left. <laughs> I, so uh, the reason why I asked that is because you said something about obedience and seasons. And mm -hmm. I've just been studying this whole concept of seasons and why we struggle with them so much. And I was talking to one of my friends about it. And I think a lot of times people struggle with being obedient to God's word because sometimes it looks like giving up a good thing too. Mm. And oftentimes we think that when God tells us to move, he's called it is always to leave something bad. Yeah. And so when you got something good going on, you second guess whether or not that's God. Like, okay, wait, yeah. God, I got to, I'm up for a promotion or this is going well. And this work, this relationship seems, cool and these friends seem decent this can't be God God wouldn't call me to to leave right. this good thing right and that's where I was last year when God called us to move out of um Dallas I wasn't necessarily in a terrible space but I was in a done space yeah and when you're that's done good. with something it's you, you no matter how many times I always describe it as like drinking from an empty cup but you know like when they still have that ice in it we shake it 
So yeah. we slurp it and we keep, but when it's done, you know when you hear somebody slurping in the cup, you be like, ain't nothing left in there. Like, that's good. I love nothing that analogy. Else, ain't nothing else in there. And that's the space that I was in last year. Like I was literally slurping from this cup wow. and shaking it and trying to yeah. make that ice give me just a little bit more Kool-Aid. And God was like, <laughs> it's done. It's There's finished. A, it's finished. There's nothing left in there. Um, and I said yeah. all to say that to be done with a thing doesn't mean that that thing had to be bad. Done right. and bad do not have to be synonymous all no. the time. Sometimes being obedient to God's word simply could also mean leaving a good thing as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So to that point, to that point, uh, the word of God says obedience is better than sacrifice. There we go. So have you seen the better side of this since God has called you to make this decision? Girl. <laughs> is that girl a good thing or what? <laughs> that girl is a, is a great thing. So um, I actually, first day, right? I'm on my way back to Detroit. Got my, my car packed up. The first day I get a call and guys you guys are getting some like inside exclusive you know information because it's not <laughs> you heard it's it not public <laughs> you so it's not public oh, it's a yes. party, Sunday night live <laughs> listen thank you here we go here we go the tea, okay <laughs> why obedience is better than sacrifice right my first day here I get a call from someone and they're like, hey, listen, are you, um, would you be interested in a long distance relationship with someone? Um, I said, I mind you, when I came here, I was like, I'm in a space. I don't necessarily know what the Lord is doing. I'm not, you know, <laughs> Danny said, yes, the T, the T. I said, you know, I'm not interested in, in trying to pursue any type of relationship. Day one, I sensed the Lord say, you've entered into a new land and now it's time. Oh, okay. So I said, you know what? I'm ready. I'll, I'll, I'll entertain this idea. I'm in the relates this relationship with this guy that will be my husband. It is going so well. I love him so much. He's so great. Sent from God. This friend told me that he thought of me because I was moving back home to Detroit and I ended up being closer to this guy. This was this person in Illinois, right? Look at her. With the <laughs> He's in Illinois. So had I not actually made the step of obedience, I would not have even been considered for this 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 friend, this person. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so that is, you know, the, the power of obedience. Yes, there are blessings connected to our obedience in this season. There is acceleration except in, um, connected to our obedience in this season. It is, it, it is dire, it is imperative that we do not look to the left or to the right, that we don't try to reason our way through what the Lord is saying, but that we literally pack our bags and we go. We stop, we cut the thing off, we move out of the thing, we move into the thing. We, it's not, it's not into, we, let's not intellectualize what God is saying and what he is doing. Stop it, you know, stop it. Literally obey what the Lord is saying. Um, and this next thing that the Lord is releasing, this next season that we're moving into, it is not going to come by way of man. It's not going to come by way of our uh, of our striving, of our um, stored up experience, our skill set. The Lord is literally doing a new thing. And it's not going to happen unless we align ourselves with the spirit of God in this hour. So praise the praise the Lord. <laughs> OK, first of all, congratulations. I Thank you, sis. Absolutely absolutely love that so y'all know i always have to tell a story when i hear a story and let's just talk about this obedience piece so a lot let's of people who know it. me I'm a, i want to talk about it from a relationship perspective because prior to meeting my husband i was dating a guy off and on and um i remember it like it was yesterday it was 9 10 11 9, 10, 11. I was uh. with my husband. He was on a business trip. He was not my husband at the time. And um, there was this guy. You know, you have those exes that be like strongholds that you know you ain't supposed to be with them, but you be feeling like you can't be without them and you just keep doing this little dance. Yep. Am I the only person that... No. No? Okay. <laughs> it's, it's some weird exes. Some... <laughs> 
But anyway, we were doing this dance. We were doing this dance, and we knew we weren't, it was never going to be the dance, but we kept doing it anyway, right? So 9, 10, 11, I said, I felt God tell me to stop, to cut, cut the dance short, right? Mm -hmm. So I called Sprint. This is back when you couldn't block people from your phone. You had to actually, like, call the company yeah. and give them the number. And I called Sprint. And I gave them the number, and I was like, block this number. So wow. I couldn't really make any sense of it. Like you said, I couldn't intellectualize it or anything. Um, but I called Sprint, blocked the number. Long story short, I'm on the phone with my best friend at the time. And I, I'm like... I had just got on the phone with Chris, which is my husband now. And I was like, where are you? Um, I thought we were having a date tonight. You told me we were going to have a date tonight. So I'm already feeling some kind of way in my head because I didn't block this person for good. <laughs> like, I didn't made up in my mind, like, I'm done, done. And then the guy that I'm dating at the time, I feel like he ghosted me because we were supposed to have a romantic date night. And he still ain't playing the date. So I got the keys to his apartment. Don't worry about that. It's my business. And I'm I'm going into his apartment. And I got in there and there was a letter on the bed that said, Get dressed. Um, your driver is coming to pick you up at seven. And there were two outfits laid out on the bed. And it, it, it said, You cannot pick, do not choose uh, anything other than what's already on this bed. So I put my little outfits together and I'm thinking to myself, this is the perfect date night. He really did plan a date for me. This is going to be beautiful. It's romantic. He had a driver come get me. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, that's the day that my husband proposed. Wow. The same day that I had that number blocked and I officially said, okay, I'm closing that door. Um, it's the same day that my husband proposed. And wow. I'm sitting up here thinking like, he ain't never planned. No, wow. No romantic date because he was planning a whole proposal. You know what, what I mean? Wow. So, <laughs> when, you, when you talk about like just moving in obedience. Wow. Like, when God impressed something on me immediately, I do it immediately. And to Goodness. other people, it looks like I am irrational. It looks like I'm impatient. It looks like I'm, I'm just doing stuff like did you even think about that wow. but the reason why I move immediately when God gives me something is because I always have a sense of urgency when I'm going to God and I think it's crazy that we wow. always pray to God with a sense of urgency but when he gives us something to do we we labor on it and yep. we, we oh I still need a confirmation and I, I still need this and I need to talk to 20 right. other people and I need 10 more years to think about it. But when we ask him for something, we, right now, Jesus. Absolutely. Make it happen today, God. But what if God waited on us to give confirmation? What if he was like, I'm just going to sit here until she gives right. another confirmation and she's ready. <laughs> I'm going to wait, wait another day. I'm going to give her another year because she still ain't ready. So I said that to say That's like, so obedience, good. Obedience is also in, immediate. Right? When Absolutely. God gives you something, you do it immediately because when we go to him for something, when we want it done. Absolutely. We want it, we want it done then. So tell, tell me more about this yes. obedience season for you. It, I mean, yes, it's, it's so, it's, it's, it's like this is the thing. It's this 2020 came to shake some stuff up that needed to be shaken up, to sift some things that needed to be sifted. And the question is, are we really going to, one of the things that the Lord showed me, this is, I was having a moment, right? And the Lord was speaking to me about dying to self. And I was like, Lord, I didn't die. You know, like I'm dying. I thought, you know, like, wow, like how much more do you need me to die? And he, he sent me to uh, Luke chapter nine, I believe it's in like verse 29 through 23. That says, in order to be a disciple of Jesus, we must deny ourselves pick up our crosses and follow him and says that those who try or desire to save their lives will lose it. But those who lose our lives for his sake will gain it. The question is, are we actually willing to follow Jesus? Do we want to follow him or do we not? This is a decision. This is a, this is a decision year. This is a decision moment. Mm. Are you willing to follow Jesus? Because what's, what's happening and what's going to happen is there is a sifting that is taking place. The true sons and daughters of God, there's a yeah. groaning. The Bible talks about a groaning for the true sons and daughters of God to arise. This is the time. This is the time. 
it's when they say put me in coach you know and it's right. like put me in coach i'm ready to get this is it this is a put you in year are you actually ready to follow jesus or not and if we're ready to follow jesus it is radical obedience radical radical obedience decision time all right what is your decision what are you choosing to do is it a i'm following god at all costs it doesn't matter what it looks like it, because that's what's required that's actually what's required to follow jesus now right like moving forward there's no more straddling the fence there's no more a little bit of my way mixed with some of god's way um i'll do a lot of who who was the king? Was it King Saul? Let's talk about King Saul. Listen, guys. listen. <laughs> that was my oh my God. I'm so glad you brought this up. Um, I'm I it's not time for me to release this whole story publicly, but those who are close to me know this that God recently pulled me away from something officially. Um, and I'll officially mm. share that on an official day. Okay. Um, but, <laughs> But God officially pulled me away from something officially mm. official. And um, a lot of people close to me was like, well, maybe it's not forever. Maybe it's just for this mm. year. Maybe, maybe just don't do it this year. And I was like, maybe you're right. Maybe I'll just go quiet on this thing for a year and just kind of see what God says. And I, God woke me up out of, in the middle of the night and I started reading about Saul. And for those of you who do wow. not know about King Saul, but God told Saul to do something, and Saul halfway did it. Yep. And and he, Saul thought he was going to fly under the radar by yep. offering sacrifices later. But God says, no, Saul is not fit for a king because Saul does not know how to obey. Come on. Saul thinks that he can halfway do something and get a full blessing. It Come doesn't on. work like that. You can't half do it and get the fullness of what God has promised you. So it's an all or nothing season, like you said. And I said, you know what? It ain't worth me losing my crown. Come on. Saul lost his crown because he wanted to halfway do it. I said, Come oh, on. no, I'm not. I, this is not the season for me to lose my Come crown. On. So I'm going to kick this crown on and I'm going to officially be done with this. Come ain't on. Halfway ain't no great area. No. And that is where the scripture obedience is better than sacrifice exactly. is birth from. So I'm so glad you brought that up because so many people try to do it halfway. And that thing, it looks differently for everyone. You have yeah. to follow your own convictions. And what God convicted me of, he may not convict a, exactly. a million other people of. But you have to follow your conviction and what God Absolutely. tells you to do. And you cannot halfway do it or you will lose your crown. It's, I'm, girl, come, come on. on. It's, it's, I know, it's you. It's you. <laughs> But I know. I, love, I, I get I it. I love how you are already there. Already <laughs> there. <laughs> I mean, I it's it's literally, guys. Like, I mean, I I hope y'all are feeling the presence of the Lord on this thing because it's so, it's 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 the it's the wind of God in this season. It's Ooh. like God, like there all of the things we're talking about. Even in Amos, if you read Amos in chapter uh chapter nine, I believe it's like thirteen through fifteen in the Message Bible, it says, you know, things are going to happen so fast, our head is mm. going to swim. All these things, this harvest time, these things that we're believing God for, this is the time. But in order to in order for the Israelites to enter, have entered into the Promised Land, there was a circumcision that was needed, right? Mm. There was a cutting away, and so there's a we have to literally lay our hearts at the altar. And ask the Lord for us, the qualification for us entering into this new thing that God is doing, because it is coming. He is doing it. It is here. We are in the time. He is, do God have our whole hearts? Mm -hmm. Do he, do he have all of you? Do we fully belong? I see my people joining. Hey, God, do we fully belong to him? Do we fully belong to God? And with Saul, he thought it was good enough. And guess what mm -hmm. Saul did? He, Saul said, hey, listen. I did when when Samuel came to him and said, "What is this?" He said, "I did all this stuff. Like I like, what do you mean? We did the word of the Lord. He told us to do. We did all of these. We didn't kill all these people. We did it. We only the only thing we did. We kept the good stuff, and and we and we kept King Agag alive. We we just kept we kept these good things. We kept the good things. We kept the Come good on. things. We keep holding on Come to the on. good things." 
And some of us are feeling like we are where God called us to be because we let go of the bad. But Come your on. stronghold is not that you are holding on to the bad Jesus. things. Your stronghold is because you won't let go of the good things and you keep trying to Come rationalize on. it. It is you're uh, you're hoarding it and keep making up reasons as to Woo! why you need to keep these things. But it's even the good thing that's holding you up from seeing what God has for you. Do you know that I have lost good friends? My that God. I walk away from a good job. I walk away from a good house. Jesus. I walk away from a good church. I There were a lot of good things that God Come pulled on. me out of last year. And you have to be willing to give up the good. I say this all the time. On. This is why he tested Abraham with his son. His son was a good thing. And that seems crazy to Come people. On. Why would you call this man to give up something he loves so much? He's a father. That is a good thing. It was the obedience piece. Oh, girl. Come on. I, my Come on. I don't even have my tea tonight. I'm going <laughs> to do but a be those, It be the good thing. It be the good stuff that trips us up. It's never, it's never the bad stuff. It's always the good stuff. Absolutely. When, when women stay in toxic relationships, why do they stay in toxic relationships? Yep. Because they start thinking about the good. Good things. But he does this. He, yeah, he said this, but he does this. Oh, it went like this, but this. It's always the good stuff yeah. that trip us up. It's absolutely. Ooh, girl. I mean, it's, mm -mm. It's, <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit. It's the Holy <laughs> okay. Spirit, guys. Like the Holy Spirit is here, and we just thank him for like he's stirring it up. And it's what is what is God asking of you, right? The thing is, is that it's when we someone else put it in the chat, right? All or nothing right? Like it's all or nothing. He wants all of our hearts. He wants all of us. And again, the separation, there is going to be a separating. You may be looking to the left of you, to the right of you. The Lord told you not yet, right? But you see people going, 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 going. And you're like, oh, I got to get in because if I don't get in now, then I'll miss it. We talked about seasons, right? We, if mm. there's, there's chronos. Girl, I got my then, whole notebook right now. So if you <laughs> see me looking down, I'm over here like, I'm legit taking notes. You hear chronos and kairos time, right? Even in the book of Ecclesiastes, to say there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. Time and a season for everything. You have kairos time, you have chronos time. Chronos time is the time that we function off of, right? It's the it's the hours, the minutes. How long did it does it? How long would it take? You have kairos time, which is God's time. It is a seasonal time. What is it time for? What is God saying is time? Mm. When God says it's time for something, guess what? Everything in heaven and on earth has to align to produce the word of God. Jesus. Everything in heaven and on earth has to align. That's why when God says, let there be light, it was a time for there to be light. No matter how impossible it was for light to be produced, things had to align to produce what the Lord has said. So that's why you cannot look to the left of you and to the right of you and see that so-and-so is doing this, so-and-so is, no, 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 no. If the Lord told you to be still and know that I'm God, then you don't do anything. You be still because when the Lord says now is time, the anointing is on what the Lord says it's time for, not on our chronos time. And so again, what are we willing to give God? Are we willing to give him everything? Because mm -hmm. that is the requirement right now. The requirement is those, the true sons and daughters of God that the earth is groaning for, that all of creation is groaning for, are those that actually look like Jesus. Jesus said, I only do what my father does, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. why he was literally the image of God. I, only, I am only doing what the father is doing. We are only doing what God is telling us to do. We are only being who God has told us to be and putting our hands to what God himself is telling us to put our hands to. 100% radical obedience. It, it looks differently for everyone. I want to go to this. When you said, um, you talked about dying to self. And every time I think about that, I think about... I think about a snake shedding its skin, um, dead skin, right? We shed dead mm. skin every single day. Even when we, you don't, like, I'm, we shedding it even now. Um, I think about the new wine skin. And when I think about dying to self, a lot of people, again, it goes back to that season piece, right? 
when trees reproduce every year, there's a dying to self that yeah. happens so that new fruit can come. Something, it, it goes through a dying season so that life can come forth. Absolutely. And when I think about dying to self and I think about myself and I think like, okay, I have, um, I have high school ebony that had to die so that college ebony could come. I had college ebony that had to die so yeah. that corporate ebony could come forth. I had girlfriend ebony that had to die so that wifely ebony Amen. could come forth. So come there on. is always this season of you have to give up who you were so that you can move forward in who God has called you to become. And mm. a lot of people have a hard time dying to self because you still want to be girlfriend and yeah. <laughs> wife Ebony at the same time. Yeah. Or you still want to be college Ebony and corporate Ebony at the same time, but somebody got to go. Come and on. One of them is not a fit for this <laughs> season anymore. Come on. It's the summertime and you still got on your winter coat. Wow. It's time for that coat to die. You Come have on. to let it go. A lot of us have a hard time dying to self because we study our highlight reel so much that we think that the old version was a better version. Oh, back Come when on. I was in college, I used to weigh this much. Oh, back when I was out, I used to look like this. Oh, my hair is longer. We start going through that highlight reel. Yeah. And God is saying she was good, but she is done. Yeah. Can something be good and done at the same time? Come on. Can you break up with a guy just because he ain't for you and not talk about how trifling he was? Can you walk away from a friendship and not say that she was Come on. Um, a terrible friend or not a good friend? Can you just be done with something? Yeah. And that not be a bad thing. Can come we on. let the new life come forth? Can we let good friendships, new friendships come forth? Come on. New opportunities, new ideas. Can we move forward in a newness of something Amen. without feeling like our past had to be wrong or bad? Come Can on. Can it just be done? Come on. So that's what I think about when I think about dying to self. Sometimes it's just, again, like we were saying every the other day, like, or the other day, just a second ago, <laughs> that it's just about being done with something. Yeah. Like, I'm just done with that. That part of me is just done. Come on. I don't do that. I'm just don't do it anymore. Do Come I think on. it's terrible? Am I telling you not to do it? No. I'm just Come saying, on. that version of me, she ain't working in this season no more. Come on. <laughs> and it's it's so good. And it's just, it's, it's, it's like, what is your destiny worth? right like mm. what is what is your future worth right like if the lord is telling because sometimes i think that those good things um keep us connected to our hearts connected to things that we want right so it's like if i was you know in the club drinking right like i'm doing my thing i'm just having fun i'm connected to i'm connected to a certain group of people that are there as well i may yeah. not necessarily i like it I, my flesh yeah. likes it i enjoy it and the Lord tell you, but not for you, not so for you come out of it. And what is our, is our, is our hearts? I think it's, it's time for us to actually examine our hearts. And here's the thing. It's okay. I remember going through seasons where I had to be honest with the Lord. I don't love you the way I need to. Cause he said that if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. Right. I wasn't. Mm. There were things that he was saying. There were things that he was requiring me. I was not willing to let go. I had to come to the truth of what was in my heart. What is in my heart is that I love this more. What's in my heart is that this is, I'm connected to this thing more than you, this person more than you. Um, I'm afraid to, 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 I'm afraid to disconnect myself. I'm afraid to walk away from it. Be honest with God in the secret place as you're praying. No more religion of the word of God. And I believe it's Psalms 51. It says that he delights in truth in the inward part. Mm. In our inward heart, God actually delights in the truth of what is actually there. So like, what is going to, what's going to help us to actually come out and come into the new thing is being honest with where we are, being honest with what was actually in our hearts, laying it at the altar, giving that to God and asking him to help us. I love that. And I, I ask God to help me with the spirit of regret because that's always my fear is that if I let this go, what if I regret it and I can't come back from it? I don't, I don't want to, to regret doing it. I don't want, because I, yeah. once I do something, I'm very like 
definitive about it. And so I don't, I don't want to regret doing it. And I mm. think that's one of the things that have me like second guessing myself. Yeah. And so I ask God to help me be confident in when I make a decision, like scripture says, let your yay be yay, your nay be yeah. yay. Like God, help me be confident and whatever you have called me to do, let me not regret any decisions that I make, even yeah. when I go down memory lane. And that's what has, again, that's why it has helped me so much to not look at my past as a bad thing. Right? Yeah, I think a lot of times when we start talking about the newness of who we are, we discount the value in who we were. Mm. And I, so for me, I've learned not to discount my past. Yeah. Like it was a valuable season. Every yeah. part of my life was necessary. Yeah. Every part of me was significant. Even the things that I didn't understand, even the mistakes that I made, even in my disobedience, every aspect Absolutely. of my life was significant for me to be the woman that I am today. And because I have that outlook on things, yeah. when I look back over decisions that I've made I don't I don't have a sense of regret because yeah. I know that even those decisions were necessary for me to be who I am today yeah so I, was I love that ask you I love that and can I actually just I'm glad yeah. that you pointed that out because one I think that's a another thing of, of of looking back right like it reminds me of who was that lot um when the Lord when they when they told him like hey don't oh, look back like I love that. go a forward don't don't look back, just move forward. And I think too, even when you speak about that regret, right? It's a, it's a, sometimes it's a us kind of like looking back and right now, this is a season where like our face needs to be set like Flint mm -hmm. on what the Holy Spirit is saying mm -hmm. right now. But it's so good that you mentioned that regret part because with the children of Israel, with the children of Israel, um, the Israelites in the um, wilderness, they were not that generated, they weren't circumcised right? They did 40 mm -hmm. years in the wilderness, uncircumcised. They were still getting the manna from God. Circumcision wasn't even required of them in the wilderness. It wasn't something that the Lord said, you got to be circumcised right now. When it came time for them to move into the promised land, they had to be circumcised, right? So it wasn't mm -hmm. like, oh, why wasn't, why weren't they, why weren't they um, circumcised in the wilderness? You know, like, oh, like, because the, the thing is, is that the circumcision, it was, a, it was a take it apart. It was a removal of things that were not necessary for where they were mm. going. But they were, but the Lord still sustained them. They were still walking with God in the wilderness. And so it wasn't even a thing of like, oh, I wish I was circumcised back in, um, you know, back when I was in the wilderness. It was the, it was the thing for now that the Lord was saying now is a time for circumcision and so mm. it's not even anybody that is you know maybe i'm glad that you brought that up because anybody that is dealing with regret or, de or dealing with like oh like condemnation right yeah any of that condemnation that's feeling like oh dang like it's too late for me i i wish that i would have did it sooner i wish that i would have responded sooner mm -mm. No looking back. Right now is the decision moment, right? Yes. There's no there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Your mistakes or whatever, there's grace for that. Like that yes. is why I'm grateful for this girl show up, right? Because it's like, okay, what are we gonna do today? What are we gonna do what in this moment? What are we gonna moment? do today? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. So yes. See, what what is God saying to you now? I love that. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> Do we have any questions? Life of a Queen says, when he said, come out from among them, it hurt because I wasn't ready. He yanked me out. Oh. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's so good. <laughs> um, have I, you know, if I'm honest with myself, I feel like I've always known I had to come out. Mm. and I think I was afraid of it so I'll tell you guys another story I love story time but when I was in elementary school let's talk about the things that we do for acceptance of people and, and never for God's acceptance mm. right? so when I was in elementary school I never forget I had just transferred to this new school and um, it, the first day of school for whatever reason we were taking a test and I got the test, and I knew the answers to the test, but there were these two girls that must have been hating on me. They clearly was hating, because you know everybody always hating on the new girl. Everybody knows that. Y'all know everybody always That's true. hating on the, on the new girl. And don't let her be cute. Like, 
Anywho, so these two <laughs> girls, you know, hindsight 2020. So these two girls, uh, they were giving me all the wrong answers like, on the test. And in my heart, in my gut, I felt like the answers were wrong. And I wow. felt like I knew the right answers. Like there was this thinking feeling in me like, these are not the right answers. Like, wow. Ebony, use your own brain. Like, but I wanted to fit in so bad. I wanted wow. to be accepted so bad. I followed their wrong answers for their acceptance. And I will wow. never forget how stupid I felt when the test came back. Because this is back when the teachers passed the test. Passed back, find your name. So everybody looking at this paper with my name on it, there's this big old D, big red D on the paper. Wow. And I was so frustrated with myself because I knew what I needed to do. I knew the right things to do, yet I chose not to do it. And wow. so for me, as an adult woman, I'm like, okay, God, I, I'm smarter now. They say, when you know better, you do better. For me in this season, the way that I'm showing up, I'm following my gut. Amen. I'm following that unction that God places in yeah. my heart, in the pit of my stomach, because I have to sleep with that at night. Yeah. Nobody else. I'm the person that's going to hold that paper at the end of the day, whether it says a D or an A. Yeah. And I would rather get a D because I got the answers wrong and not because I follow someone else's ignorance. That's so good. That's like at, at the end of the day, if I'm going to fail, I want to fail because I simply just did it no one better. But I am no longer in a season where I'm going to fail so I can be accepted. Girl. I'm not shrinking so that you can like me. I'm not dumbing myself down wow. so y'all can think I'm cool. I'm not going to stop talking about God because you don't want to hear Come about on. it. I'm not going to stop putting my lipstick on because you don't feel cute in yours. Come I'm on. not going to stop wearing my heels because I, you think I'm too tall when we stand next to each other. Come I am on. in a season where I am going to put the answers on the test based off of what God has downloaded in me. And I'm not going to fail because I'm following someone else's ignorance Listen. just so that I can be accepted. So when I think about being set apart and being yanked out, I feel like really it's a, it's a come to Jesus moment to your come on. I feel like it's God not just pulling you out of the crowd, but putting a mirror in front of you and saying, I want you to see yourself. Amen. You have been seeing yourself through the lens of all of these other people, and you've become true to who they want you to be, and you still are not true to who you are and who I've called you to be. And while they're cheering for you and saying, I like you like this, and he's saying, I like you like that. And they saying, I want Come you to on. jump over here. And they saying, I want you to run back there. You're doing all of that. And it's Come cool, on. but you're still ultimately failing the test. Come on. And I don't like failing. I love rap music. If you don't know this about me, y'all know I'm going <laughs> to listen to some trap music. And I believe little Baby just said on this song, <laughs> keep an eye, that he is not losing. And Come I'm on. tired of losing Come because on. I'm I'm following people. Like that's stupid. Like, no, I'm not doing that anymore. If I'm a loser, it's gonna be on my own terms. Come and on. nine times out of ten, if I'm doing it on my own terms, I'm not gonna lose. Because Come I on. know what God has placed in me, and greater is he that is in me than he is as who is in the world. And, and and God will not fail. Come so on. If I'm standing on the word of God and I'm moving in what God has called me to do. And I'm doing what God has called me to do. There is no failure in that. Come on. But if I am standing on the word of man and I'm doing what they want me to do and I'm acting how they want me to act and I'm speaking what they want me to speak. Come on. Ten times out of ten, I'm going to fail. Come on. That's just how I see it. So that, that is, is my, so powerful. So <laughs> like, my that's powerful. Listen. <laughs> And and that's, I feel like that's what I feel like that was the beauty of 2020 and 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 to the time where we are now, where the where the church sat down, everybody had to have a seat, right? In 2020 and moving forward, there was a there was a seat that had to because what happened was the Lord was had to there we had Jesus had to take the throne again of our hearts of His church of our lives. And one of the one of the deep convictions that was birthed in me, and I pray in so many of us, was when I stand before God, I am going to have to give an account. I'm not going to be able to say this with my what my but 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 so and so told me this, but they said this, but they said that. 
we're going to actually have to give an account for what the Lord has entrusted us with. We're going to have to stand before Jesus. Our pastors won't be able to stand with there with us. Our leaders won't be able to stand there with us. Our uh, friends, our circles, our communities. No, this is a time of relationship with God. He want, we're going to have to give an account for the things that God has entrusted in us. And so that is yes. that's so good. That's, that's come out from, a, from among them. Be ye separated is you're going to have to actually get a, give an account to the Lord for yourself, for what the Lord has entrusted you with. And no one else is going to be able to stand yes. there with you on that day. And, being, and people don't understand that being set apart is not arrogant. It's actually one of the most humble things you'll ever do. Because it gets lonely, and all mm -hmm. you can do is trust God. Being set apart yeah. is a very humbling process because Absolutely. it forces you to tap into you, and you can't tap into anyone else. You mm -hmm. can't depend on your support system. You can't depend on such and such and so and so. It is one of the most humbling things that you'll ever go through in life. Yeah, that, that separation period, that set apart period. Um, you're going to feel guilt for leaving other people behind. You're going to feel this obligation to, to go back and, and do things that you haven't been equipped to go back and do. There is so much that comes with being set apart. It's not an arrogant thing. It's not a prideful thing. It is really a humbling experience, but there is definitely a blessing yeah. on the other side of it. And when you get to the other side, I believe you'll be like, um, it was Joseph with the coat. Mm, yeah. Joseph. yeah. Yeah. Joseph was set apart. He was he was yanked out from with his brothers. And he even told his brothers, it was not you who rejected me, but yeah. God pulled me out from you so that I can save you. Yeah. And Joseph went through a very humbling process because he was set apart, because yeah. he was different, because he had favor on his life. He was bullied. He was rejected. He was sold into slavery. He went to jail. He, he went through a very humbling process because he was set apart. Yeah. But all the time while he was being set apart, God was setting him up. And God wasn't just setting him up for his own glorification, but God was setting him up so he can go back and save his yeah. own family. And so it's Absolutely. important that you embrace that set apart season because the very people that are rejecting you and bullying you and talking about you, they will turn around and be the people that you have to go back and get. Yeah. So you can't don't this <laughs> don't discount <laughs> that set apart season. <laughs> Because you you just never know how God is setting you Come up, on. not just to be, not just to bless you, but to bless those that he has called you to through yeah. your experience. So yeah. that's my TED Talk Amen. for today. <laughs> <laughs> now, being set apart is very humbling. And I have so enjoyed you. You're awesome. You gotta come to Atlanta. I know. I, I'm actually gonna be um coming to Atlanta um next month. So yes, um I'll I'll be there uh visiting some friends. Uh, but this has been definitely so great. no. Hit me up when you get here. We gotta go yes. and and have coffee, guys. So, okay. Um. Life of the Queen says, in this season of being set apart, I started to write. I thought I hated writing during this lonely season. I actually discovered that I love it. Yes. I love that. You just never know how God is going to use you in this season. Thank you guys so much for joining. Do we have any last questions or comments? Um, if you just jumped on, thank you guys for joining. We are talking to Tawana Burks, also known as Tawana Darche. Um, that last name is going to be changing soon. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but we are talking about showing up obedient. Amen. And so if we don't have any other questions, I just want to thank you. Um, so want to any, any last words you want to say on the subject of obedience before we jump off? Uh, yeah, just I, any, anyone listening to this, I believe that the Lord himself has led you here. And I would just say, to get before God and to ask him, what is it that he is asking and requiring of you right now um, in this season? What is it? How, how are you called to be positioned before him in this season and ask the Holy Spirit because he is our helper. 
um, we can't walk in obedience even without the Holy Spirit. And so asking the Holy Spirit to help you to walk in a lifestyle of obedience to God um, moving forward uh, in Jesus name. And I, I just decree over every person watching this uh, in Jesus name that the that there is an acceleration and an abundance um, connected to your obedience and the things that God has for you, they're being released in, a, in an accelerated way. They are coming. The promises of God are absolutely yes and amen towards you. And so just know that you are not forgotten. The Lord has not overlooked you, um, but that your time has come. It is here. And it requires our hearts to be in a position of um, being still be before God, knowing that he's God and being obedient. So, um, yes. Also, um, thank you for having me. My sis sent me an entire um, tea situation here. I got oh, it. So, yes. uh, Shout out to Fanchin K. <laughs> yes, yes, your tea is actually from Fanchin K. She is my sister. She has her own tea company. So if you guys need any uh, personal it. tea items, please hit up Fanchin K Tea Time. Also, uh, before you leave, Tawana, could you please tell everyone about your book? Yes. Um, so, um, so I just wrote a book, uh, published a book last year. It is called Daughter, and it is from the Created to Belong series. And so it is a fiction work inspired by my life as an adopted kid and my biological mother's life as an overcoming drug addict. So it's so juicy. It's so good. Um, and that is my actual testimony, but it is a fiction work. Um, and so, but this book will bless your lives. You can get it on Amazon. Um, yeah, thank you, Danny said it's amazing. Yes. Praise him. So, uh, you can get this book on Amazon, you get it on Barnes and Nobles, anywhere books are sold. You can get that, um, there and, um, yes. And so, uh, also on my website, uh, tawanadarshay.com, you can sign up for, I, I do book clubs. We have some other uh, great things that are coming up. So you guys can also uh, get connected to me there as well. Thank I love you. it. You've been an absolute, absolute blessing. Oh, um, glory thank you to so, God. so, so much for joining us tonight. I'm so excited to just continue to see your platform explode. Um, Amen. I'm looking forward to seeing um, you and your future husband and all that God has for y'all. <laughs> Amen. And shout out to Danielle for connecting me to you. And thank you guys so much for joining us. So this week, guys, we are showing up obedient, obedient to the word of God. You've heard this today. If you're watching the replay, it's, still, it's never too late to show up obedient. So whatever God has placed on your heart to do, if you were waiting on a confirmation to do it, this is your confirmation. Yeah. Have an amazing night. God bless you. Um, be sure to, to subscribe to TattleTheTeaParty.org. Uh, we are going to be rolling out more information about our series, our Girl Show Up series. We're going to have a couple of in-person tea parties coming up this year, and we're going to end it with a conference. So mm -hmm. make nice. sure you are subscribed to our website yeah. so that you can get all the upcoming hot, hot tea. Nice. All right. I love y'all. Nice meeting you, Tawana. Yes. Have a good night. I'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye, guys.